We're going to jump into a new series at the start of this new year. And last week I shared with you that this is the year of the Genesis. It's the year where we, we, we see new things, where we experience new birthings. It is the year for new beginnings. And, and after what has been a challenging year, I think that uh, we ought to be looking into this new year with great hope and expectation that God is about to do a brand new thing. Now, uh, if God's going to do a new thing, then we've got to get ready for the new thing that he is going to do in our lives. And for the next few weeks, I want to get us into a brand new series titled A New Story. Yeah, I really believe that. I believe that God wants to write a new story for you and, and that this is your year to write a new story. You see, every year is an opportunity to write a story. And here's the question I want to ask you. What kind of story will you write in 2021? Will it mirror the stories of brokenness and failure that you have written in the past? Or will you finally write the story that God has created for you? Now, here's what I want to declare over every person who's coming out of a very difficult season of life. I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. It's time for you to rise from the ashes of defeat. It's time for you to live the life that Jesus paid for. It's time for you to write a new story. And that's the declaration that I want to make to everybody. I don't care if you had a good year or a bad year. For those of you that had a good year, I'll say this to you. God has a better year for you. He has more where that came from. And if you had the worst year of your life, I want to declare to you that better days are coming. But those things will only come when we partner with God to write a new story. Now, for some of you, this is encouragement to your ears. This is exactly what you needed to hear because you were feeling down and out and overwhelmed by the way things have been going, overwhelmed by the weight of bad decisions you have made. I want to speak this good news to you today. God wants to write a new story for you. God wants you in 2021 to write a new story. And, and, and he has just sent me here to encourage you that if you would partner with him, if you would align your life with his plan, he's going to do exactly that. He's going to write for you a brand new story. Now, now if we're going to write a new story, that we're going to have to have a vision for our lives. And that's exactly the, the, the thing that I want to talk to you about this morning. I want to talk to you about vision, about vision, I, a, a new story vision. That's, that's the, the message title, if you would, a new story vision. Let's talk about getting a vision for your life. Now, I know some of you may be already turning me off because you're like, pastor's going to talk about vision, and I'm not, I'm not a planner. I'm not a person who can see out into the future. As a matter of fact, my life has been such a mess. Things have been so bleak and so dark. I can't even see anything uh, for my life. I don't have any vision for my life, um, so I'm going to turn him off. No, no, don't turn me off because I believe you're going to get a new definition of what vision for your life looks like. I believe, I believe you'll listen just a little bit longer. You're going to see that God's vision or how he defines vision and how we define vision is very, very, very different. All right. So let, let's dive into this. Uh, go with me to the book of Proverbs, verse, chapter number 29, verse number 18. That's Proverbs 29, verse number 18. And I'm going to read from the good old King James Version. Come on, y'all. Where's the KJV people out there in the chat room? I'm talking about if you didn't read from the KJV, you were not going to heaven. If you came up in one of those churches, I am right here with you today. Here's what it says. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Let me start by saying this scripture might be one of the most 
misinterpreted passages of Scripture that, that, that's found in all of the Bible. I mean, there's a lot of verses that are misinterpreted, but this one right here might be in the top five, maybe top ten. It might actually be the number one. Uh, but this Scripture is often misinterpreted because the words in English don't translate as well as the words in the original language. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to take you on a little journey through, through Bible study, and, and uh, I want to help you learn how to do this for yourself. Now, I'm a big proponent of reading the Bible in various versions and translations. So what I want to do is I want to read that same exact verse for you, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That's Proverbs 29, 18. I want to read it to you in the English Standard Version. Here's what it says. It says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Now, there's a little difference there. Uh, in the first verse, in the King James Version, they said that the people perish. Uh, perish could mean death. Uh, naturally, it could be a death spiritually. Uh, the ESV gives us a little more clarity. It says, where there is no prophetic vision, where there is no vision for future or prophetic vision, vision that comes through God, uh huh, the people cast off restraint. They don't live with restraint. They don't live with any guides. They live lawlessly. Now let's go on to, to one more translation, and it's the New Living Translation, and let's, let's see how that reads. It says this, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. There's three different uh, translations or versions of the scripture, and if you read all three together, there's clarity coming to what the writer is talking about when they're talking about vision. So many people will tell you, you need to have a vision for your life. And there is truth to that statement. We all need to have a vision for our life. If we're going to rewrite our story, we have to have a vision for where we want to go. We have to have a vision for what we want our lives to look like, okay? And that's true. But here's what's not true. You and I are not responsible for writing that vision. Now, I, I pray that that encouraged you. Hopefully, that took a weight off of your shoulders because you're saying, I'm not even good at figuring out what I'm going to eat today, let alone knowing what I'm going to do over the next 9, 12, 15 months, whatever it may be. But I want you to understand this, that we need a vision for our lives, but you and I are not responsible for creating the vision. I love the, the New Living Translation's uh, wording. It says, when people do not accept divine guidance. You see, vision is not a picture of what you want to do with your life. Vision is a picture of what God wants to do with your life. Go ahead and write that down. That's the first point. Vision is a picture of what God wants to do with your life. Now, that encourages me. Let me tell you why. Because I, I've been that kind of a person who's felt overwhelmed trying to come up with vision for my life. I've been that person who has kind of uh, uh, stressed myself out trying to figure out what's next and, and gotten so consumed with trying to draw up a plan for my life that I actually turned from the one who had the plan for me. Again, Proverbs 29, 18 in the New Living Translation says, when people do not accept divine guidance. So vision is divine guidance. Vision is God speaking to you about your future. Vision is God, God outlining the plans for your life through his word. All right. It, it, it's, so, it's so important for us to get this. It's so important for, for everybody. I want you to understand this. So important for you to understand that vision doesn't have to come from you. You don't have to go through the painstaking process of coming up with this grandiose vision for your life. Now you're saying, well, Pastor, the other night you and Pastor Mike were on and you were talking about having a vision for your life. Yeah, I'm talking about having plans and goals, all right? But ultimately, the vision, the overall vision for what God wants to do with you, he's already written that story for you. Now, all you and I have to do is partner with him and put feet to our faith. What do you mean by that, Pastor? What I mean is when God declares a thing, we have to just 
back that thing up or honor whatever God declares by putting our feet to it and actually walking out what God has already worked out. I'll say that again. God's calling us to walk out what he has already worked out. God's already worked out every detail of our life. He's already worked out the seasons, the ones that are, have passed and the ones that are coming. And what he's saying is, I want you to partner with me and I want you to allow me to give you divine guidance. Now, here's, here's why this is important. It's important because if you don't live by divine guidance, here's what the scripture says. It says the people cast off restraint. That's the, ES, uh, the ESV, the English Standard Version says that, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. The New Living Translation says they run wild. When you don't have divine guidance, when you don't have prophetic vision for you your life. When you don't have God's vision for your life, you're bound to do everything and anything. You see, when you have God's vision for your life, he will set the parameters. He will set the guide. He will lay out the path before you, and you can walk out every step that he works out with full assurance that he will be with you in that space. Even if if working, if walking out God's plan includes you having to wait, as, as we just sang, he's in the waiting with you. God will be in the midst of it because you are walking out the steps that he has ordered. This is good stuff right here. So, so just to kind of bring it all together, you are not responsible to come up with some grandiose vision for your life. And this message is not just for the people who have the vision for a vision to start a ministry or the vision to start a go back to school or to start a business. No, no, no. When we're talking about vision, vision is for the mom that's going to work eight hours a day and come home and take care of her children. Vision is for the, 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 the father who's going to work, uh, work that, that manual labor job and come home uh, to his family every single night of the week. And you might say, but pastor, that's all I'm doing. Even if that's all you're doing, God has a prophetic vision for your life. God has a divine guidance that he wants to give you as you faithfully serve your family. What I'm saying is this, you don't have to have some grandiose plan or vision for your life for God to be in it. God is in the everyday details of our lives and he has a vision for that right there. Come on. That's good stuff right there. God wants to be in it with us, and we have to be willing to accept his divine guidance. Now, to write a new story, we need divine guidance through the prophetic revelation of God's word. I'm going to say this to you. Pastor, how do I know God's vision for my life? God's vision for your life is found in God's word. Real simple. God's vision for your life is found within the framework of Scripture. Yes, if you search the Word of God, you will find God's plan and His vision for your life. God wants to to show you what He wants you to do with the life that He has given you through the power of His Word. So what is God's vision for our lives? Well, I'll prove it to you in Scripture. John 10.10, one of my favorite verses. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. Here's what Jesus says. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Real simple. God's vision for your life is abundance. God's vision for your life is is abundance. Now we got to define abundance because some of y'all are shouting right now saying God's going to send me a check and God's going to send me a car and God's going to send me fame and God's going to send me notoriety. That's not what he means by abundance. The passage doesn't promise, it doesn't promise fame, it doesn't promise worldly riches. The, pro- the passage promises a superior, super abundant spiritual life. A life empowered by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And because as Christians, because we have Jesus Christ, he lives within us. And because he lives within us, we have a super abundant life. Here's what God wants to give you an abundance of. He wants to give you an abundance of peace. He says, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave leave with you. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it. I don't give it to you like the world gives to you, but I give you an everlasting peace. 
He says this, he says, I want to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. God wants to give you an abundance of peace. He wants to give you an abundance of joy. And you know what's amazing about peace and joy is that none of those things change. They do not change when your circumstances change. When trouble hits your life, you can still have peace. When trouble hits your life, you can still have joy. In the midst of uncertainty and pain and challenges, no matter what you face this year, you can still have peace and you can still have joy. And that's what God has promised you. That's the vision for God. God, That's God's vision, rather, for your life, that you would live in abundance, in abundance of supernatural power, the kind of power that keeps your head above the waters, that keeps you confessing the goodness of God in the midst of difficult times and circumstances. Has God promised us riches? No, he hasn't. Has God promised us fame and fortune? No, he hasn't. But he has promised to be with us. He has promised to give us supernatural power. He has promised to give us an abundant life. That's God's vision for your life. No matter what you do, if you become a doctor, if you become a lawyer, if you go back to school, if you start the business, if you restore the relationship, the marriage, whatever it is that you're doing, I want you to understand that God's promise and his desire and vision for your life is that you would live an abundant life. And that abundant life does not start externally. That abundant life begins internally. Come on now. God's vision for your life is that you would wake up every single day with great joy, with great peace about his presence in your life. You'd have great joy about the life that he has called you to live. And that regardless to what's happening around you, you'd be able to rest in the peace and the joy that God has given you. I want you to get that. God's vision for my life is abundance. God wants me to have an abundance of joy. He wants me to have an abundance of peace. God wants me to have an abundance of supernatural power so that I can live the life that he has called me to live. Regardless to where that life takes me, if it takes me to, become, it takes me to the place where I become the CEO, praise God. If it takes me to the place where all I do is go to work and come home every single day, praise God for that as well. That is God's vision for your life that you would walk in supernatural abundance. Now, here's something else I want to share with you. It's my third point. Clear vision leads to purposeful living. Clear vision leads to purposeful living. This is why I have to be clear and certain about God's vision for my life. This is why we press so hard and we challenge you as pastors here at the church to get into your word, to get into the word of God and to study the word of God. Because I really believe that the vision for your life is outlined within the pages of scripture. This is why we encourage you to develop a prayer and a devotional life because we believe that God wants to speak to you directly concerning his vision for your life. And you need clear vision because if you don't have clear vision, you won't live in a purposeful way. Clear vision leads to purposeful living. When you have a clear vision, you are less likely to waste time and resources. Did you hear that? When you have a clear vision for your life, you are less likely to waste your time and your resources. When you don't know where you're going and you don't know the direction God's taking you in, you're just shooting from the hip and you're trying everything and trying to see what fits. Let me just try this and let me try that and let me try this and let me try that. And maybe you're out there, you're like, man, Pastor, that is me. I've tried so many things these last few years and nothing sticks. Nothing seems to to be what what I thought it was going to be. Check this out. Stop wasting time and resources. Get in God's presence and get a clear vision for your life because when your vision gets clear, you'll start living on purpose. You'll start living in in alignment with the purpose of God for your life. Now, my boys, I love them so much, and I try my best to do everything I can to support them when they get excited about something. But you parents out there, you probably know what I'm about to say, and you probably experience it as well. Your kids get into something. They get into a hobby. They get excited about it. I mean, they immerse themselves in it. And, and then they start asking you, Mom, can you buy me this? Dad, can you buy me this? If you buy me this, I won't ask for nothing else. I promise you don't have to buy me nothing for Christmas. Some of y'all know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. God, Dad, please help me. Dad, please, if you buy me this, I promise I won't bother you. And then you go out and you buy it for them. 
and they've got joy and they got passion about it for like three weeks. And then all of a sudden, the thing that you spent so much money on is sitting on their dresser in their room collecting dust. I am not talking about my children right now. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> you see, in, in the moment, they thought they knew what they wanted. They thought this was a thing that was going to revolutionize their life. They thought this was the thing that they were going to give themselves to. But after time, they realized it was not it. Now, I'm not discouraging you from, from, from supporting your children. I'm going to keep doing that and supporting them. And they're going to figure it out along the way. But, but I will say this, that we got to be careful that we're not doing that with our life. We're not doing that with major decisions, that we are wasting precious time and resources. Now, there's a scripture that says, teach us, Lord, to number our days. I want you to understand that your time is limited. Your time is limited. You don't have an abundant resource of time. Time is limited. Time is short. And you must make the best of the time that God has given you. Here's the next thing. You are less likely to give your attention to distractions when your vision is clear. I'll say that again. You are less likely to give your life over to distractions when your vision is clear. When you have a clear vision, you can easily make the distinction between what is purposeful and what is not. You can easily look and say, that doesn't serve the vision for my life. That isn't where God is taking me. And because God isn't taking me there, I can't give my time, my talent, and my treasure to that. I think sometimes we give our, ourselves to every good cause. And we think that every good cause is a God cause. But the reality is there are some good things that are not a God thing. And you, when you have a clear vision for your life, when you understand God's plan and direction for your life, you will, you will not allow yourself to be distracted by good things. See, we oftentimes talk about distraction in the context of bad things. But I want to say this. Some good things are, the, are, are, are distractions. As a matter of fact, the most, the most uh, difficult distractions to, to discern are good things. It looks good. It looks godly. It looks hopeful. It looks righteous. But just because it looks that way doesn't mean it's what God has called you to. But when you, when you have a clear vision for your life, you're, you're less likely to give your attention to things that just don't serve your purpose. We, we share this on Wednesday night, and I'll share it again. And that is, it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to good things so that you can live a God thing. It's okay to say no to good things, again, so that you can say yes to a God thing. I want to say yes to the God things in my life. And, it, 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 and I'm going to have to be able to rightfully discern the difference between a God thing and a good thing. You see, that's why I need a clear vision. I need to know what God wants me to do and what, where God wants me to be. And and I need to give myself to that after I've received that divine guidance. Okay? Again, guys, clear vision leads to purposeful living. When your vision is clear, when you know what God has called you to do, all the things in the external part of your life, all the relationships, all the opportunities, all those things that are out there trying to grab your attention, you will be better able to rightfully discern what is God and what is good. What is God's vision for my life and what is my vision for my life? And that's a challenge right there that we're all going to experience as we begin to write a new story. As we begin to look at the vision God has for our lives, we may find that some of what I have planned for my life and some of what God has planned for my life might be in conflict. See, I've found that there are things that I wanted that God didn't want for me. There are things that I thought were good for me, and they weren't evil things. They were righteous things. They were good things, but they weren't necessarily God things. So I pray that throughout the course of this week, as you begin to look into the Word of God, as you begin to pray and seek God's face for the vision for your life, that God in that will reveal to you the places in your heart, the vision that you've created for yourself that God never intended for you to live out. Now, I believe that many of the struggles and the challenges that we face in life often come because we are living our vision and not God's vision. And I want to take you back to that scripture in the book of Proverbs 29, 18, very powerful verse. When the people do not accept 
divine guidance. When they don't accept divine guidance, they run wild. You got to really ask yourself the question over these past few years, over these past few months, have I been running wild? Has my life been a life without any kind of boundaries, without any kind of, of protection, anything keeping me from the evil, the, the, the evil that is out in the world, anything keeping me from the plan of Satan to destroy me and to distract me and to rob me, to kill me? It, it, be, be honest with yourself. Ask yourself that question. I, I, have I allowed myself to live without restraint? Have I allowed myself to live running wild? And if I have, the only solution to that is that you would today say, God, I accept your divine guidance. God, I accept the fact that I've had plans for myself and I thought they were good. But Lord, here's what I realized in time was that those plans never got me to my purpose. And because I didn't have a clear vision for my life, I lived my life recklessly, and I am probably dealing with some of the consequences that come as a result of it. If that's you, I want to encourage you to be honest with God. Say, God, I've been running wild. God, I have no prophetic vision for my life. I have not accepted your divine guidance. And as a result, I've been running this way and that way, and I'm tired and I'm stressed. But Lord, today I'm surrendering to you. Today I'm making the decision to say that, Lord, I'm not going to write the story anymore. That I don't have to be responsible for writing this story. Oh, yes, yes. Let the weight of that come off of you right now. I don't know who you are, but let the weight of that right there come off of you. You don't have to write the story. You don't have to do it. All you have to do is align yourself with God's divine guidance for your life. And when you align yourself with his divine guidance, he's going to set the parameters. He's going to give you the restraint you need so that you can live a life that is fruitful. You can live a life that leads you somewhere and a life that honors God. I just want to encourage you with that. Don't want to, I, don't want, I don't want you to, to dwell on the past. Can I just encourage you? This is the year of the Genesis. It's the year of new beginnings, so we can't dwell on what didn't work. We can't dwell on how we blew it before. We can't dwell on the fact that we were running wild. What we can do right now in this moment is we can turn our lives to Jesus. We can repent. We can turn from what was, and we can turn to who is. Who is? He is our God. He is our strength. He is the one who provides vision for our lives. He is our divine guidance. And if that's you, I want to encourage you right now, in your mind, in your heart right now, tell God, God, I'm turning away. I'm turning away from my plans and my vision, and I'm turning towards your divine guidance, God, because I believe if I do that, I believe, God, if I give you my life like that, that you're, you, have, you have written a story for me. You have a plan for my life, God. There are things that you have prepared for me that eyes haven't seen, that ears haven't heard, neither has it entered even into the, the mind of men. There are things that you have in store for me, God, that I have not been able to taste or experience because I've been trying to do it my way. But today, today, right here, right now, I'm surrendering every part of my life to you. Now, some of you that have been saved a long time, you're like, oh, this message is for those people that don't know Jesus. No, this message is for us because there are aspects and areas of our lives that have not been completely surrendered to God's divine guidance. And as we start this new year, God is giving us this new opportunity with this brand new day that he has given to us. The Bible says that we got new mercies. And here is God's new mercy in the form of this message. And God is saying to all of us, let me come into the area of your life where you've had vision, but you haven't had my vision. Let me come into the area of your life, whether it be your relationships, your finances, whether it be your health, whatever it is, let me come into that area of your life and let my divine guidance rule. Let me give you prophetic vision for your life. And if you do, I promise you, I will give you a better life than you can provide for yourself. You see, that's what I've learned over the course of my journey with God, and that is that his plans are so much better than my plans. That every time I've resisted to follow his divine guidance, I only hurt myself. But when I align with his plan, sometimes it hurts. I'm not going to act as if there isn't pain associated with the divine plan or guidance of God, but it always leaves you in a better place than where you started. 
So I'm encouraging everybody, whether you know God, whether you've been far from God, whether you've been saved for 30 years or 30 minutes, it does not matter. This is the season to invite God and his divine guidance into your life and say, God, I'm not writing the story this year. I tried to write it last year and it led me into depression. I tried to write it the year before and it led me into the arms of a stranger. I tried to write it the year before that and I lost everything. God, I am done with writing my own story. I am done with trying to define my own vision. God, what I am going to do is I'm going to to rest at your feet. I'm going to sit at your feet. I'm going to feast on your word, and I am going to spend time with you in prayer. And Lord, I'm asking that as I do, that you would reveal your plan for my life. God, I pray that as I submit myself to you, that God, you will give me the abundant life that you promised me. In John 10, 10, Lord, I know, I know, I know, I know your plans are better than the plans that I have for myself. Let me give you this last thought as I wrap up this message today. Here's what I want to say to everybody everywhere, no matter who you are, or where you are in life. I want to say this to you. Get over it. Get over it. I know that sounds a little uh, just like I'm not being nice and, and I, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. No, no, I'm saying get over it. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. Hebrews 12 and 1 says this. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge cloud, crowd of witnesses to the, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Real simple, the writer in Hebrews is telling the people of God, saying, listen, you got to drop anything that is going to get in the way of you running the race that God called you for. I want to say, church, you got to get over anything that is impeding your vision, that is keeping you from being able to see what it is that God has said about your life. So when I say get over it, I don't mean get over just the emotion. I'm saying get over it. Push the problem down, push the thing, the weight and the sin that was keeping you and besetting you, push that down, get over it so you can see clearly the vision and the path that God has for your life. You see, I believe that our lives have become inundated with so much stuff that is anti-God and just, just distractions that sometimes we can't even see clearly the vision that God has for our lives. And this is why we do 21 days of prayer and fasting. Because when you're praying and you're fasting and you're disengaged from all those things that distract you, what you're doing is you're getting over it. You're pushing the things that have been keeping you from being able to see God's clear vision for your life. You're pushing them down and you're looking over top of those things and you're now able to see God's plan for your life. So as we begin this new year, this first Sunday of 2021, I want to encourage you. It's time to get over it. It's time to get over the things that are keeping you from seeing the plan of God. It might be a relationship. Get over it. It, it, might be, it might be your own emotions. Come on, get over it. It might be some kind of issue you've been dealing with for year after year after year. I don't care. Whatever it is, if you're going to see the vision of God for your life, you've got to get over it. And when you get over it, you've got to open your eyes and keep looking for God's divine guidance. My God, I'm telling you, there's somebody out there that needed that word of encouragement. This is the year to get over it. You can't make any more excuses. This is the year to put down the weight. This is the year to put down the sin. This is the year to put down the habits. This is the year to put down anything that has come to your path that is impeding your vision, keeping you from being able to see the way God has called you to see. You can't see God's vision for your life because there's so many distractions. But I'm declaring right now, I'm going to keep preaching this till you get it in your spirit. Get over it. Push those things down. Bring down those strongholds. Bring down those things that are keeping you from living the life that God called you to live. God wants to write a new story. You need to write a new story this year. And the only way you're going to do that is if you get over the things that are keeping you from seeing clearly. I'm going to go back to that last thought. Clear vision leads to purposeful living. If you're going to live with purpose this year, you've got to have clear vision. Get over it. Whatever it is, they hurt me. Get over it. Whatever they said, get over it. Get over it. Don't let words keep you from seeing. 
Don't let harsh, harsh opinions and criticisms from people you don't even know, don't let that keep you from being able to see God's vision and plan for your life. Don't let what somebody did to you 20 years ago, don't let that thing keep you from being able to see God's get over it. Get over it. Push those things down. Push those weights out of the way. Push those distractions away. Because if you get clear vision, you'll start living on purpose again. If your vision clears up, church of the living God, we'll start living on purpose again. I declare this not just for you as an individual, but I declare this over the church. It's time to get over stuff. It's time to get over stuff. It's time to get over stuff. It's time to get a clear vision for what God is doing with his church in this hour. It's time to get back to what God has called us to do, and that's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's making sure that every single person that doesn't know Christ comes to know him. It's time for the church to get over it. Get over the offenses. Get over the distractions. Get over it so you can see God's divine plan. So you can see his, you can receive his divine guidance for your life. I don't know who I'm talking to and how this is impacting your life, but I know that something I said has hit you somewhere, some part, some portion of your life. You needed to hear something that was spoken today. And before we end today's service, I want to pray with you. I want to pray that God will give you supernatural strength to get over stuff. I want to pray. I want to pray that you would come out of lawlessness, that we would come out of this place of just kind of living with no restraint, but we would come into a place where we would receive God's divine guidance for our lives, and that we would, we would receive it because we spend time in his word. We would receive it because we spend time in prayer. That's the prayer I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for every person who's watching right now. Lord, we want a new story. We want to write a new story in 2020, 2021, God, but we know, we know that it's, it has to come through your divine guidance. It has to come because we have the vision that you have set before our lives, governing us and ruling us. Father, I pray for every person who's under the sound of my voice, every single person who's watching online right now. I pray that you give them the supernatural ability to get over it to get over the stuff that has been keeping them from seeing your vision for their life. God, help them to get over the weight of sin and addiction and habits and strongholds that have, Lord, have just kind of plagued their life. Father, I pray right now that you would break them free supernaturally right now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, would you help us, your people, your children, to live in a purposeful way? Lord God, we know the only way that we can live on purpose is if we have a clear vision for our life. And God, your word, your word gives us clarity. Lord, when we spend time in prayer with you, we receive clarity concerning your vision for our life. God, we know that you've called us to abundant living. Lord, we just ask that you'll help us walk out what you've already worked out. God, help us to have the faith to walk out the steps that you've already worked out. God, before the foundations of the earth, before we were in our mother's womb, God, you already worked out the story. You've already worked out the vision for our life. God, we just ask you for the strength and the faith to walk out what you've already worked out. Lord, I ask right now that you'd help me to receive divine guidance this year. Lord, that I would not be led by any spirit but the Holy Spirit. That I would not be led by my feelings or my emotions, God. I pray for my brothers and sisters. They would be the same for them. That they would not be led by their emotions, but that they would be led by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, take control of our lives. Have free reign in our lives. We want to live. We want to write a new story. We want to live something different this year. And God, we know we can't do it without you. God, would you bless every person again who's under the sound of my voice right now. In Jesus' name, amen.